Guys, we're back in the back bay, and last week we introduced you to the plaster on this project, and today we're gonna walk through a couple of details with Tim, our site super, uh, on some of the things that we're using, some of the products that we're using uh, to get our you know, really flush and kind of seamless ceilings. So last week we talked about the lights. Uh, down here you can actually see a great view of that trim ring, uh, as well as the mesh over it. But Tim, over here we have, what is this, right, this one right here? That's one of the grills that we talked about upstairs. Uh, so this was last week, it, we didn't actually have the flange. You have the flanges this week. Yeah, well, upstairs we need the fire dampers. Down here we don't. Got it. So that's why these ones in this level will get finished now. So why don't we need the fire dampers on this level? This is its own unit, whereas everything from upstairs, common walls, goes into other units or common spaces. So those ones need to be protected to ours. Got it. So this ceiling here is in between our, within our unit. Uh, as Tim said, this doesn't interfe interfere with the unit above, so you don't need the fire damper. So uh, remind us, who makes this, this flange? These are architectural grills. So architectural grills, and this is basically the finished product here, uh, which is a powder-coated aluminum. Uh, so it's a bar grill, and I, when we walked in, Colby and his team, they were actually setting that uh, with a big straight edge across basically in all directions. Uh, to make sure it lines up with our trim ring on that light as well. Yep. Um, what are some of the things that you're looking for and like as, as these guys are installing, what are you paying attention to as far as install? Things that they wouldn't know, like some of these lights and these grills were all maintaining a distance or being straight with one another. The, the plasters wouldn't necessarily know that going into it. So we'll kind of talk to them, make sure they set up a laser in the right spot pull parallel the right places. They're really good about asking questions too. Yeah. But that's our job is to kind of make sure those finished details that we talked about months ago kind of come to this. Yeah, and as Tim said, like the pulling parallel is imperative uh, for install. And oftentimes, you know, sheet metal, duct work, things like that, that can get bumped around during the rough. Uh, even when they're boarding, something can get kind of twisted as that board maybe gets cut in the wrong spot. Uh, and to make sure that that like you said, is get, being pulled parallel from the right location uh, is really important for that final detail. You've actually painted inside the duct black, which is a great detail, so you don't have that reflective duct work, but these just get uh, installed with a couple small Allen head screws, right? That's it, yep. So if I were to jump up here, and this was in its final location, you essentially are gonna put it right in that opening, and you're gonna have a screw in each corner, and that is what it's gonna look like in the finish before plaster. Very clean. Now, we have these, but we also have access panels. I saw some access panels in the primary closet, um, and they're actually already finished. Um, very similar. This is, ac this is actually a sample. Well, not a sample. This is another one. Where's this one going? Uh, it's just not installed yet. It goes down the other side of this unit. So this actually gets installed when they would do the board. This just goes in a section they don't. But this will sit flat with the wall plane. So blue board and then this board on the face, and to remove it, you just push the springs and it'll kind of hang like that. If you want to take it out completely, you undo this carabiner mm -hmm. and the whole panel just lifts out. And what's nice about this compared to the traditional ones, not only are they sheet metal, but they're also on top of the surface uh, where this gets, it gets, like you said, installed with everything else, uh, with, with all the board, and then you're getting just this small reveal yeah. when it's all said and done. So any place we needed access for some of the HVAC units, mm -hmm. We have um, an inline fan, water supplies, gas supply, all those things where you would normally by code need access to, we're choosing to do the Balco panel so they're not as obvious for the client. And roughly how much does something like this cost? They're only a couple hundred dollars. So a couple hundred dollars, a much cleaner look. And I think I overheard you talking to one of the guys earlier that frankly it's a nicer panel to use as well from a functionality standpoint. I think it is. You don't have to build anything. I've messed around with access panels for years. It's about the best you're going to get for short money. Yeah. Um, and, and you actually pointed out a, a key thing. This is, is not blue board. So we've talked about this before. We use blue board and plaster. Um, and so plaster is not going to technically stick to this. So the two options would be to either prime it in, in uh, preparation for plaster, or this would just get joint compounded kind of in its final condition. Yep. Very cool. Why don't we take a look at uh, one of those finished? In that, in that room. So primary closet, what's behind this access panel here? So this is a HEPA filter for the air system. So it needs to have an access panel so we can get to the filter in here. So this is kind of the finished condition of what that panel would look like on the edge. Um, and then just slips in, carabiner, just like the other one we just looked at. And that's just removed. That way they're not messing around with it while they get that equipment set up. 
and in its final condition, we'll pop that in, everything will get painted. Yeah. And then I actually noticed when we walked in here, this sitting here, uh, this is actually another grill prior to uh, being installed entirely. And you see how it's designed to have that mud flange here. So you have that flange that gets screwed to the board and then that lip right here. And that's the lip that you're gonna wanna make sure is completely coplanar with the lip on the recessed lights. Um, what do we got right here? This is one of the niches. So in some of the bathrooms, we have some niches that are going to get plastered in. So since we're at the point now where we're getting glue board ready, we need to get these things installed. It gets the bead attached to it and this will get mudded into the wall in this stage of the project. And why is this side not, not beaded? This one gets a door and that's gonna leave space for that door to close. So this actually goes in against the finished wall. So the plaster is now complete in that room. This can be installed and the door will actually close. So that door seam is actually gonna be right against a wall that heads perpendicular to this box. Exactly. So this flange here, if you guys wanna see how we've done this, uh, Material Millwork's done a great video on this, but essentially it's a modified um, aluminum bead that material epoxies to the box. And like Tim said, this gets installed during the plaster. And then when it's all said and done, you have a great final condition of plaster right to MDF that all gets painted and in fact looks like one material in the final condition. Yeah. You said that we have this already installed upstairs in plaster? Yeah, we can take a look at that door. Why don't we head up there and do that? So just like downstairs where we had the MDF with the bead attached, we have a nice poplar jam and it has that same detail. Now you can kind of see it a little better, nice and sanded, but that's that bead that we looked at downstairs mm -hmm. in its final condition. So aluminum bead here attached to the board. And then I think what you just said is actually a really critical point that this all gets sanded uh, really flush so that aluminum planes out really nice with the poplar but in its final condition like this all gets painted that wall color yeah. and you can't really tell where it goes from plaster to poplar now why are you doing that why wouldn't you just wrap this in a plaster board this is actually a door that the miller you know material is making so rather than trying to mess around with plaster trying to be plumb level and square i think it's probably better to just build a jam out of wood as if it was a regular door mm -hmm. and then just get creative as far as how to solve the issues, this one being, how do we marry plaster into a door? And typically, and well, not typically, but one of the benefits to this is if we were to have, say, a hinge, like a sauce hinge or a concealed hinge, this gives us the ability to have that, rather than, you can't really put a plaster, or a hinge through blue board and plaster, you don't have the structure there. That really, this really gives you that opportunity to do that. You can have a door stop and things like that. Yep. Um, so the same reason that we built those niches downstairs, you know, that's a box that has adjustable shelves. It's designed to be a cabinet um, and to have a nice clean inside cabinet. It's difficult to really kind of screed plaster in a, a box formation, especially when it's small, where we can control that in our mill workshop, get a really nice, nice solid box, but have that clean transition um, from that material out. Uh, and it's funny, I was actually rented an Airbnb a couple weeks ago for Thanksgiving, and I'll share, uh, hopefully Doug posts the video because I'll share it with him, but they had a plastered in box for all their towels in the bathroom. Uh, and I'm fairly positive they just kind of stuck the MDF, I mean the poplar out, and then joint compounded yeah. it uh, because there's a nice crack about three quarters of an inch all the way around. Um, and it, when I, I immediately took the picture, I'm like, this is why we do this. This is why we think about how do we do this in a way that is intentional? How is it gonna be long lasting? Uh, because another really big concern is like this material could expand and contract differently. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, Colby ha has been really critical about is making sure that that is, you know, mesh taped in a way that, you know, creates strength and really does allow all of this to uh, become one. Yeah. yeah, it looks like a regular bead, but we don't treat it that way. Maybe exactly. Treat it a little different. We're gonna get into what is the future staircase and we're gonna give you a sneak peek of what's going on down here. Uh, I'm not even gonna explain what you're looking at, uh, but the long and short of it is the staircase is built. It's in a factory right now. It's being finished and when it comes in, it has to fit into this hole completely perfectly. Uh, that is the goal. So everything that you just saw is a sneak peek at how to achieve that level of finish and we'll get to that in a future episode.